Hello everyone, back to you today's video. We're going to have a look at whether next week, 10 days. In today's video, we'll also have a look at CFS B2 uh, for the next month. That takes us into November. That'll be at the end of the video. But we'll begin by looking at uh, what's happening in the tropical Atlantic. Because I've got another storm. Uh, we've got Ophelia uh, at the moment. It's going to have an impact on our weather at the weekend and into the start of next week. So begin looking at uh, tropical storm Ophelia. And this is Ophelia, of course, uh, just here. It's nowhere near land at the moment. It's uh, right in the middle of the uh, tropical Atlantic Ocean. The forecast track of Ophelia is to gradually inch towards the Azores as we go through into uh, the uh, end of week and the weekend. So this is the current position of Storm Ophelia. Uh, right now, uh, and the model is forecasting this storm to uh, gradually move in that sort of direction, probably becoming a hurricane as it does so, maybe going to category uh, one. So we have a hurricane moving through tropical Atlantic, and by Sunday, it is getting quite close to the Azores uh, just there. Now, what this is going to do initially is to help to build a ridge up across uh, continental Europe. So, over weekend, we're going to get a lot of very warm weather and it will be mainly dry. But next week, early next week, we might see, well, it won't be a hurricane, but we might see the remains of what was Hurricane Ophelia pushing in across the country, giving some very wet weather at some point through the course of next week. Now, as ever with, with these storms, they are always very difficult to track to uh, say where they're going to go, what the impacts are going to be. So it will be a case of watching this space. But we might be hearing quite a bit about, well, currently storm, but soon to be Hurricane Ophelia in the uh, next few days. Uh, GFS Ensemble data today is looking at Cambridge. Somebody has asked me have a look at uh, Cambridge. So uh, the red line here is a 30-year upper air temperature average. Now you can see what's going to be going on. At the moment, we're a little bit warm and average, but at the end of the week, into the weekend, we get this big push-up in the temperature, going very close to 15 Celsius at 850 HPA. And if this was in the middle of July rather than middle of October, we'd be talking about temperatures going up to 30 degrees. Of course, it is the middle of October, so we're not going to get anywhere near that high with the temperatures. But even so, mid 20s is possible depending on how much sunshine comes out. But I wouldn't be ruling out temperatures getting up to 25 degrees, 77 Fahrenheit, uh, at some point over the weekend if we get quite a bit of sunshine. After that, we find the temperatures sliding away. It's quite a gradual process, but they do eventually finish up back very close. 30-year temperature average. You'll notice lots of dry weather for, uh, through the remainder of this week and into weekend, and then rainfall spikes are coming back as we get into next week. Uh, surface temperature and air pressure then for Cambridge from the GFS ensembles looking uh, like this, dealing with, uh, dealing with surface uh, pressure first of all. So we're quite mild at the moment, we're above 15 Celsius, that's fairly mild really for October. A little bit cooler uh, there perhaps in the uh, second half of the week quite briefly. And then over the weekend into next week we have this warming trend, similar temperatures uh, going up. Well the ensembles are going up into the low 20s, so peaking somewhere around there uh, Sunday, Monday, where we might be peaking around 22 23 degrees, but something like London might be a little bit higher than that. Second half of next week and into the uh, sort of final week or so of October, this period just here, we see the temperatures are sliding away then. I say it is quite a gradual process, it's not a sudden process, but the temperatures do start to cool off. So by the time we get towards the end of the ensembles, uh, we are beginning to see temperatures back under 15 uh, degrees Celsius uh, once again. And some cooler nights uh, potentially starting to appear uh, with this as well. Maybe even some ground frost to get through towards the uh, final stages of the month. As far as air pressure is concerned at Cambridge, so around 1,000 and uh, 13 millibars, something like that, 1,015 millibars at the moment. We uh, lift the air pressure up then as we go through the end of week and into the weekend, and then we lower the pressure as we go into uh, next week once again. 
temperature anomaly is looking very warm now for uh, the next week. So this is taking us from the 10th through to the 18th of October. Gas weather the October month head forecast, which for, was for a little bit uh, cooler than average October. That looks like it's out the window. Well and truly, that's uh, a bust. I can tell you that now uh, already for October. So we are looking at a warm week ahead. Temperature anomalies from the 10th to the 18th of October, significantly warmer than average in the UK and Ireland. We're not alone. Most parts of Europe are coming out warmer than average as well. Precipitation anom anomalies looking a bit of a north-south split, really. Scotland and Northern Ireland a little bit wetter than average. England and Wales uh, coming out significantly drier than average. Let's have a look at the GFS then for Saturday. And uh, so that's Athelia down there. That is... By this point, either Hurricane or Storm Athelia down there. You see what it's doing initially is helping to build this ridge across central parts of Europe. And that ridge is pumping up this uh, warm southerly wing. We go through into Sunday. And uh, again, we've got these warm southerly winds pushing up across the country. It's a weather on top in the northwest. That could bring some quite wet weather to Scotland and Northern Ireland. But for England and Wales, lots of dry, fine and warm weather. Then through into Monday, a cold front is pushing southwards and eastwards introducing much cooler, fresher air. And then Ophelia starts to move. So this is the remains of Hurricane Ophelia just here off the coast of Portugal on Tuesday. That's turning wind back into the south again as it begins to push northwards. By the time you get through to Wednesday, well, that's the remains of Hurricane Ophelia, Ophelia now as quite a big area of low pressure just sitting over top of the UK. So quite clearly that could bring some very wet weather there as we go through into the middle stages of uh, next week. Finishes up as a major area, area of low pressure by Thursday 19th of October to the north of Scotland. That's been gale force winds and much, much cooler air coming in now from the northern part of the Atlantic Ocean. And then we go off and running into a proper unsettled spell of weather. And actually, by the time you get through to Saturday, the 21st of October, we are having a go at trying to turn the winds into the north. So that's trying to bring some colder air down from the north as the remains of uh, Hurricane Ophelia heads off up into Scandinavia. Quite a wild ride there uh, through next week, starting off almost like summer, finishing up uh, certainly your terminal and trying to get wind into the north. These are the upper air temperatures, so you can see how warm it's going to be, particularly across England and Wales over the weekend. The peak looks like it's on Sunday, uh, where the 850 HPA temperatures are trying to get close to 15 degrees Celsius. By Monday, much cooler, fresher air is pushing in from off the Atlantic behind a cold front. But then as Ophelia starts to move northwards, it begins to push warmer air back from the Bay of Biscay with it. Um, but very unstable. By the middle of next week, we are firmly under low pressure condition. Uh, so very wet. And then we go through to second half next week and much cooler air is coming back in from off the Atlantic Ocean. And then we go through beyond day 10 and we start to try and pull down some much cooler winds uh, from the north. Don't often show you these. These are the thickness uh, lines. So what you do with these is that uh, this line just here is effectively the summer line. So when you're behind that line or when you're within that line, you've got like summer sort of temperatures going on. This green line just here, that's kind of like the autumn uh, line. So when that line pushes through the country, we've got cool autumnal air. And this blue line up here, that's the 528, 850 uh, eight, uh, that's 528 dam line, I should say, thickness line. And that's kind of like the winter line. So when that appears in the winter, that's one of the minimum requirements that we have to see to uh, get snow. So you see, but over weekend, we have got this summer line, the 564 line, in across England and Wales. But uh, by the time we go through to... So that is um, sunny the 15th of October. By the time we go through to sunny the 22nd of October, another week on, you see what's happened. The summer line has uh, slunk back down into the Mediterranean, where you expect it to be. The autumn line has cleared the UK, the 546 line, so we're within autumnal air. And the 528 line, the winter line, that is threatening... Uh, the north of Scotland trying to 
get down across the country. So big changes there indicated with the uh, air temperature, certainly as we go through into the middle and second half of the month. East Edward looking like this. So Saturday, putting up that warm air into the south. Uh, and that continues into sunny as well. It's going to be a very warm weekend. Might be the final barbecue weekend of the year. You never know. Um, go through to Monday. Again, that's the remains of Ophelia down there, just off the coast of uh, Portugal. Then that pushes northwards again. This one's on a Tuesday as quite a major area of low pressure. will bring a real drenching to uh, much of the country through uh, the early and middle part of next week. Unlike the GFS, which turns things much cooler then into the second half next week, the ECFS actually keeping things quite warm uh, even into the second half of uh, next week. Not as warm as the weekend, but still even... Uh, to day 10, which is uh, Friday 20th of October, we are still pretty warm with those upper air temperatures. So there is a bit of uncertainty about uh, next week's weather. Will it cool down and turn autumnal? Will we keep some uh, warmth going? Have to see what happens there. Finally, just have a quick uh, run through of CFS V2 for the next uh, month. So these are 500 bit of our heights broken down into wheat pits. First wheat pit taking us from the 10th for 16th of October. We've got high pressure uh, to our south and east, low pressure up to the north and west, and they're doing something a bit like that with flow and projection. So that looks uh, reasonably dry initially and quite mild. Remember, it probably turns more unsettled through the course of uh, next week. Then we go through to the 17th, 23rd of October. High pressure is uh, down to the south. Low pressure is out to the northwest as well, doing something a bit like that. Flowing with jet stream, that's bringing in a lot of dry weather, quite warm conditions too. And then week three, the 24th to the 30th of October, the ridge is strengthening, it's centering right over top of the country. That could be bringing in some cooler air uh, from an east northeasterly direction, but a lot of dry weather coming through with that. And then this continues into the start of November. This is the 31st of October to the 6th of November. High pressure, above average heights dominating. Um, difficult to say what the air mass will be like with that, what the temperature will be like. Uh, it is November, so we're under high pressure in November. At the very least, there's likely to be mist and fog. Could be frost as well if the skies are clear by day. Potentially pleasantly warm. It just depends whether the wind is sort of east, northeast, or east, southeast. But the main emphasis, I think, from the CFSD2 is uh, really for lots of high pressure and anti-cyclonic dry conditions through the second half of October into start of November. That's very, very speculative, so won't worry too much about that. Coming back to the next week to 10 days, uh, so we are going to get this push-up in the temperature over weekend. Potentially, it turns very warm for the time of year over weekend. Real barbecue weekend down in the south. Might be the last one of the year, so make the most of it if you enjoy that kind of thing. Uh, early next week... More of an influence from uh, ex-Hurricane Ophelia. It might give us a spell of very wet weather at some point through the early or middle stages of next week, depending on its track. And then that might be the end of the warmth. We might go off and running into a spell of much more autumnal weather. Have to wait and see. On that, right, I'll keep you updated with all the latest five-day forecast coming up tomorrow. So come back for that. But that's all for now, and thanks for watching.